Hello, I'm Mike, and in this video I'm going to give you 10 powerful Adobe Audition tips that every editor should know. Okay, if you work with audio and you use Adobe Audition, these are some tips. First of all, let's start with tip number one, and that is getting used to keyboard shortcuts. Now, I'm sure you're very used to playing audio back using Spacebar, like this. Hello there, I'm Mike. And but what about speeding through things? Have you used the JKL keys? If I hit L instead of space, hello there, I'm Mike. It will also start the audio, but if I hit L again multiple times, hello there, I'm Mike. And I'm recording to show you that you can speed things. It makes me sound like a chipmunk, but I can also use J and K to go back and forth and find the part of my audio that I need. Hello there, I'm Mike, and I'm going to say you can speak things up if you like and make me him Nick. Yeah, I'll leave this it. Very good, and you can reverse people and find if there's any hidden meaning in what they actually said. But I bet you didn't know this. If you go into Adobe Audition's settings and then you look for playback and recording, you have the opportunity to change your JKL shuttle speed, as it's known. Now, normal speed means it increases by one time every time you hit the key. But if you don't want to sound like a chipmunk and you actually want to hear what's being said, you might want to take that down to half speed or even slow speed for small increments. Let's try half speed. We'll click that and click OK. Start with the L key and keep tapping it. Hello I'm Mike. And I am recording to show you that you can speed things up if you like and make me sound like a chipmunk, but it's much easier when you're editing audio and you want to listen to a lot of audio. Or OK, so that's already better. And if I hit command comma on my Mac keyboard and go back to playback and recording, I can make that very, very slow. 0 0.1 and play. And it's very slow. I'm Mike and, <laughs> and I am recording to show you that you can speed things up if you like and make me sound like a chipmunk, but it's much easier when you're editing audio and you want to listen to a lot of audio all in one go. These hotkeys can really do incredible things for you. And I suggest you learn them, save it to a pro, I think audition. Nice. So you see how you can change the vary speed. I highly recommend going into the settings and dialing it in for your use case. Just before we move on to tip number two, keyboard shortcuts are so powerful, and I wanted to show you a couple in the multi-track as well. First of all, if you're working with just two tracks, but you've got the default six showing, hit Shift and E on your keyboard, boom, you've got rid of the unused tracks. But what's more, you want to see things from a bird's eye view, all nice and zoomed in or out as it may be, Command or Controller on a PC and Backslash will give you a nice zoomed view, which you can then zoom into the part that you need. Now tip two, and this is Ripple Delete. If you haven't used it for editing podcasts in particular, it's going to change the game for you. Let's just have a listen to a little bit of audio around about here. The health benefits, that was going to be a question that I was going to have for you. But um, so you've lost 40 pounds. 40 pounds. OK, so we've, we've got this but um. But um, and I want to get rid of that. Now, the usual way is to delete here. And then you see we've got this gap and then delete here. And then I'd have to take these and somehow grab them and mix them and match them. But that's convoluted. And that, that takes a lot of key presses and mouse movements. Ripple Delete will do this all for you really easily. We just need to select both tracks like so by selecting track one and two and the bit we want to delete. And then hit Alt on your PC or Option and then Delete and immediately it ripple deletes, it nudges everything up, and we can listen. Question that I was gonna have for you. So you've lost 40 pounds. 40. That's working great, and just to make the edit smooth, we can select this track and just nudge it in a little bit, and you'll see here, especially if we zoom in, we've got a nice crossfade going on, as well as the ripple delete. Next up, and sticking with the same podcast audio, I wanted to show you a view that is different to the waveform. Waveform is great, and it's default in most audio editors. You can see the loudness and quietness of different parts of your audio, and we're all used to seeing a waveform, a visual representation of how audio sounds. But there's an even better visual representation. This is tip number three, the spectral display. Shift and D on your keyboard, providing you're here in the waveform view, will bring up this like heat map of what's going on with your audio. And you'll see that speech looks like this. We're covered all the way through. We've got bass in our voice down here. And it's like a heat map of all the frequencies in your audio. So human speech, yep, it happens down the low end. There's a bit of mid-range here and even some high stuff. And when you really get used to the spectral view in Audition, you will also notice that you can see S sounds by the little peaks and red blotches here. Here. So this will be an S. And if I actually play the whole audio, we've got S there and we've also got S here. I do. 
That's, I do. We've got tss, like that. And all of those things can be removed later on using something like a de -esser. So it helps you to see various different areas of your audio and dial in if there's any audio problems, any background noise. Spectral frequency will help you to see a lot more that you can't necessarily see in the waveform view. If you're really enjoying what you see so far, throw a like and remember to subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this. And that brings me on nicely to tip number four, and that's using things like advanced noise reduction to make your audio sound better. So now we're in the spectral view. Well, if you were to look just at the waveform by hitting Shift and D, you'd say between the words here, it looks pretty quiet here. There's not really much background noise. But if we hit Shift and D, we can actually see there's all kinds of glitches there and a load of background noise happening down here in the low end. So how can we get rid of that? Well, advanced noise reduction still exists and works incredibly well if you know how to dial it in. Yes, you can use Adobe Enhanced Speech, but also if you know what you're doing, you can do a lot less processing on the voice and potentially still get better results than AI can. So for instance, let's play this audio. But, um, so you've lost 40 pounds. Now, if we play this in particular and maybe turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. That is a ton of background noise. How do we get rid of that? Well, we can train it into an original noise reduction effect that's existed for ages in Adobe Audition. Effects, noise reduction, capture noise print, click OK, that is now done. And now we can highlight over all this audio, go back to effects, noise reduction restoration, noise reduction process, and we simply then use this to get rid of the background noise by drawing a little graph here and we'll kind of stick with the low end so we won't do any noise reduction here on the higher frequencies. This is a frequency graph so low frequencies, mid frequencies, high frequencies all here. Now we can change this, we can change the noise reduction to be rather harsh and we can choose the reduction level to I would say maybe around 44 dB is good. Click apply and boom you'll see a lot of that low end stuff has now gone. But um so you've lost 40 pounds. We've got a much nicer sounding podcast without too much destruction going on with the voice. But of course, if we want to take it further, we can go ahead and select this audio and add something like a noise gate. Under effects, we go to amplitude and compression. We go to the dynamics effect right here. And then you want to make sure that you've only got auto gate ticked and turn the threshold right down to a, say, minus 45 dB. Click apply and you'll see it gets rid of all that background noise. Now we've got a very clean space between the speech. Let's play. But um, so you've lost 40 pounds. So you can hear not only has it removed the background noise with our original noise reduction effect, but also adding that noise gate in has cleaned things up and potentially done a better job than AI presently can do. Next up, tip five. Batch processing. Yes, Adobe Audition can convert tons of files. It could be five files, 10 files, 100 files, even a thousand files can be converted to your exact preferences. And I'm going to show you how to dial this in now. First of all, if you go to the window, you want to look for the batch process window, which by default usually doesn't show in Adobe Audition. When you click that, it appears over here. And then you can grab a load of files and they can all be different types. You can see I've got some videos here. I've got some waveforms, MP4s, all kinds of stuff going on there. Drag it and drop it into batch like that. And you'll see they appear in my batch window and also up here in my files window. Now I can choose what I want to do to this audio. And by default, there's a bunch of different favorites that can do all kinds of different things. But say I want to add compression, I can click the voiceover compressor effect. If I want to raise the pitch or add my own voice enhancement preset to all those files, I can do that. But perhaps I, I want to do something very specific. Let's open one of these files and see that the audio is currently a little bit quiet. Maybe I just want to normalize all the audio and convert them to be the same file type. So to do this, first of all, I'm going to record a favorite and I just go into favorites and then start recording favorite. And now whatever I do when I click OK will be saved into this favorite. So I click OK and I'm just going to go again now to the effects menu and I'm going to go to amplitude and compression and I'm going to go to normalize and I'm going to to normalize to minus one dB, like so. See apply, that's done. Favorites, stop recording favorite. And now I can call this mic normalize, like so. 
And now I've got that saved and I can use that in my batch process. I could do a bunch more presets on the audio so we can do a bunch of processes all in one run. But let's start with normalize. I'm going to undo this now on my present audio and I'm going to look at the other audio just to show you that they're all different volumes and different sizes. So now we're not only going to normalize them, but we're also going to export them as a certain file type. So we'll go to favorites and we'll select mic normalize and then export settings. And then we can choose if we want to put a pre prefix or a postfix. So I might just put mic dash as the prefix for each file that comes out. And then we can choose a directory here. Documents will be fine for me. And then we can choose a format. So maybe I want all of these to be MP3s at a certain rate, maybe 44100 stereo 32 bit. And we want the bit rate to be 128. Click OK. Click OK. Click yes that we're doing a lossy format. That's fine. And click run and see what happens. And now you'll see in my documents folder here, I've got all of these audio files as MP3 with mic tagged to the start, just as I asked, and they're all here. And if we go through, we'll see they've all been normalized to exactly minus one dB. Now they all look a consistent volume. And that was done in seconds using batch processing in Adobe Audition. It's a powerful tool that can handle, well, really as many files as you can throw at it. Now let's get on to tip six. And tip six is all about matching volume levels easily, especially when you're working in the multi-track with multiple audio files. Let me show you. So here I've got a bunch of different sound effects here. One is quite loud. See that speaking up at minus three dB. And then let's listen to this sound effect over here. Yep, again, minus three. And this one. But then we've got some voiceovers. This is a voiceover. And that's about minus 16 dB. And this one. And this is a voiceover. And that one's louder. That's going at minus 14 dB. So levels all over the place. Really hard to do some mixing and producing here. But there's a very simple tip to match the volume levels of everything using Adobe Audition's advanced loudness algorithm, which doesn't just normalize everything, meaning if you've got a really loud part of an audio, it won't get raised as much as the other piece of audio. Loudness listens to the whole piece of audio and matches the perceived loudness of the entire audio piece. So you get nicely matching audio. It's the best way to do it. Command A or Control A on the PC and then right click on any of the audio files and look for match clip loudness. Click this and leave the settings as default. It should be ITU-R. Target loudness should be minus 23. Tolerance 0.1 LU and click OK. Boom, now we're all matched and look at this. You'll see this audio, this is a voiceover, is about minus 12, this is, and this is a voiceover, about minus 12, this is, just under minus 12, which is great for mixing. The same with this one, down at minus 15. Because these are more compressed, the sound effects, it knows to do that. And then I can put this over the top of this and it's gonna match well. This is a voiceover. That actually works really well. And you can see on each audio file how much it's been matched by. So this has been taken down by minus 10.3 dB, but this one has been increased by 4.7 dB. And if we go ahead and undo that by taking this down to 0 dB and raising this back up to 0 dB, you'll hear the difference. You can't hear the voiceover. This is a voiceover. So you see match loudness in the Adobe Audition multi-track is an absolutely incredible feature. Next up, tip seven, it is all about using presets. Say I've got my voiceover here with my sound effects. This is a voiceover. That's pretty generic as it goes, but I can go ahead and add some funky stuff to it. Maybe I want to add a nice little bit of echo and maybe we'll dial in that echo to be say 500 milliseconds on one side and 250 on the other side. This is a voiceover. That's already sounding good, but I'm also gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to the modulation menu, chorus. This is a voiceover. That's probably Probably not what I'm looking for. I'm probably looking for some subtle vocal chorus. This is a voiceover. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good, but finally I might just want to go ahead and go to filter and EQ and scientific filter and add a final preset, which will be the drop off below 250 hertz. Let's listen. This is a voiceover. Okay, I like that sound and I'd love to add it to this voiceover. And this is a voiceover. So the easiest way to do this is save what you just made as a preset. I made this preset on track two in the multi-track. I can click the preset button here and I can call it Mike's Epic VOSFX. Click OK and it's gonna save it now into my presets here. And when I click over onto this track, I can then drop it on this track and look for 
scrolling down here, Mike's Epic VOSFX, making sure to move the sound effect off this track, otherwise it will get applied to the sound effect as well. And suddenly... And this is a voiceover! Pretty cool and pretty easy way to recall effects really easily when you're working with audio in the multi-track. Presets, simple to save and easy to use. Next up, tip eight, I want to show you the mixer view here in Adobe Audition. This is a little more advanced, but stick with me here because you can do some cool stuff. Here, there is an equalizer option, which is usually off by default. I'm going to switch on on track one here, and you'll see there's a little editor window here, which I can work with on the EQ. But what's more, I'm not just going to apply EQ to this track. I'm going to apply EQ to different parts of this track. And to do that, I pop open this track by doing this, and I now get different envelopes. Now, with In The Mixer View, this EQ now enabled, I suddenly have an option here to change all kinds of track EQs. Now, don't get overwhelmed by the fact that there's loads of them. Let's just go ahead and change one setting. Let's go for low shelf gain, and then we get a little green line that appears here, and we'll apply it over time to this audio and playback. And this is a voiceover. And you hear it gets thinner as it goes along. That's using that one setting under Track EQ Low Shelf Gain. Next up, I'm going to reset that back to pretty much normal and get rid of the low shelf gain. And this time I'm going to go in and put the high shelf gain because it does exactly the opposite. Again, fading it over time. And this is a voiceover. And you get that more kind of bassy muffled sound. So that's great if you want to kind of muffle out a voice or muffle out some audio in Adobe Audition using the mixer view to switch on EQ over time and then popping open this little triangle and working with the track EQ, high shelf and low shelf, you can do effects like that. And you can actually see if you go back to the mixer, this being applied over time. And this is a voiceover. And you see how the EQ is rolled off over time. Next tip, I want to show you the powerful auto heal feature of Adobe Audition. And one of the biggest problems we come across when recording are plosives, when we pop on the microphone. All the pictures that you've taken. Like there. Now, remember earlier I was showing you the spectral frequency view, shift and D. All the pictures. And then if we zoom right in. All the pictures. We can see that that pop is right there. All the pictures that you've taken. Now we can paint that out using an auto healing brush. Here it is. It's actually called the spot healing brush and the shortcut to get it is B on your keyboard. And all I need to do is use the curly brackets just to make that a bit bigger. And I simply paint over the pop sound there. See, it's completely gone. Let's listen back and see how it sounds now. All the pictures that you've taken. No popping. Auto healing is so quick and easy to use. It's like Photoshop for audio and it works in seconds in Adobe Audition. And the final tip for this video, markers. They are great for keeping track of projects, especially when they get big and out of hand. Now, I use markers all the time when recording because I can actually record into the multi-track. Let's show you just over here. I might start recording something and you can see that I'm speaking and my voice is being recorded, but say there's a mistake or a problem or a glitch or a stutter. If I hit the M key while I'm recording, look at this M and there we go. I placed a marker and M, I can place another marker. This is great when recording podcasts and knowing you're going to go back and edit later, just have that M key right in front of you. Mark all the places that need editing. It's going to speed up your job by maybe three or four times when editing the final podcast. But markers have a little bit more power than just hitting them during the live recording. You can actually go back and you can click somewhere and hit M and you can go ahead and right click and change this. OK, so you can change the marker type to be a different type. So CD track gives it a different color if you want to mark things in different ways. And then we can also right click and we can convert to range, which gives us the ability to select a whole section of audio. And we can actually give that marker then a name simply again by right clicking on it, clicking rename and saying this is a jingle like that. And we can rename all of our markers in the multi track and instantly jump to whatever we need to edit in Adobe Audition. So there are 10 powerful tools for you editing audio in Adobe Audition. Whether you're making jingles, saving presets, or editing podcasts and wanting to save time, there's definitely been something for you in this video. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite tip was. And if you're really into audio and you want to learn more tips, make sure to watch the video that's showing up your screen now because um, YouTube thinks you should watch it next. Thanks.